Just because you can't see it, don't mean it's not there. Hallelujah. I said, just because you can't see it, don't mean it's not there. Amen. Amen. Glory. I said, glory. glory. I said, glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to East Coast Camp Meeting, celebrating 50 years of ministry. Hallelujah. Come on. My, 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 my. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, if you can, you may be seated. Give somebody a high five, look at them, smile at them. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. How do y'all like the stage? They did a good job. Hallelujah. Special thanks to Amber and her sister. What's her name? Angelina and of course our lovely staff here we have our precious staff help but they did a great job getting it done today but uh, I'm excited how about you we made it 50 years 40 years here at Victory Life Church and that is of course a tremendous milestone but we'll talk about that later my family will come on up please thank you thank you thank you thank you you stand in the background Real quick introduction. This is Brittany, that's my brother and, and Jerry Ann's daughter. <laughs> this is my youngest son, Brandon. This is my other, oldest son, what's his name, Randall. <laughs> this is his wife, Kristen. And this is Callie, this is part of our family also. And this is Caden. And this is Brandon's oldest son. Where's uh, Kaylee? I mean, uh, they're Chloe. They're all Chloe. Okay, we got something that's missing. <laughs> and of course, you know Tiffany, my brother Phil, Jerry Ann, and this is couldn't leave my better half out. This is my lovely wife, Debbie. And you skipped Kristen. You skipped Kristen. I didn't skip Kristen. I skipped Kristen. Oh. Hallelujah. Well, we just want to take this opportunity, Pop, Mom, and Dad, to say you may be seated. We want to take this opportunity to say that. What a tremendous milestone. 50 years of ministry, 40 years here at Victory Life Church. You've been steadfast. You've been faithful. Reminds me of a story. I actually just thought about that story while I was sitting over there. And uh, it's about an old farmer. Well, he wasn't old, but it was a farmer that stayed out in the country. And they relied on the land to make ends meet. And his son would go out there and plow that field. And they'd work hard. He taught his young boy how to work. And they, had to, they planted the seed. The crop was growing. It was just about harvest time. And they were fixing to reap the harvest. The fruit and trees were doing real good. And then all of a sudden, there came a tremendous storm. And the storm wiped out just about every single crop in that field. And they didn't know how they were going to make ends meet. And the young boy walked out there. And he went his daddy. And they looked at the field in despair and the young boy said he looked up at his father and his father said started singing that song rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee the young boy grew up and later said that's the greatest sermon he ever heard he understood what it was like when the rubber meets the road when times get tough, and Pop, Mom, I've seen you guys. It ain't always been easy. <laughs> There's been a lot of tremendous struggles. There's been tremendous challenges, I should say. But you showed me what it's like when the rubber meets the road. You showed me what it's like spiritually, how to respond in those struggles and those challenges. And you've had many of them. And some I know, probably some I don't know. But I've been here with you ever since. My brother's been here with you ever since. And we love you. We appreciate you. What a tremendous milestone. 50 years of ministry. 40 years dedicated, faithful. What you're leaving is a tremendous legacy of faith. And that really describes both of you guys. A legacy of faith you're building. And you continue to build a legacy of faith. And we're definitely going to pass it on. Amen. Amen. Love you, Pop. Love you, Mom. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
go back real quickly to August 2011 because um, the enemy tried to take you from us that day. And um, there's, you've given your testimony, and it's an amazing testimony, but there are some things that went on behind the scenes that you may not be aware of. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. But I'll never forget that phone call that morning. Early in the morning, it wasn't good news. Gil immediately got in the car to go to the hospital. I started pacing my, my home and just interceding. It actually woke up my youngest son, who was home at the time. And about that time, we got a phone call, and Gil said, there's bleeding on the brain. So we jumped in the car and went straight to the hospital. And Dad, you know, when I got there, we went over to you, and you couldn't talk, and you couldn't move, and you didn't know what was going on. But I want you to know that everything that happened from that point forward was because of the 40 to 50 years that you have stood in this pulpit and taught faith and taught how to stand and how to ignore a doctor's report and know whose report we're going to believe. When, when they put you in an ambulance, they had to take him, for those who don't know, they had to take him to another hospital because he was so serious and time was of the essence. And we were behind the ambulance in a car, and I know Mom and, and Gil will remember this, and there was traffic, traffic jams. And we knew that this was a life or death situation, and time was of the essence. And do you know what we did? We started laughing. We laughed out loud, we praised out loud, and we commanded you to live and not die the whole way to the hospital. But it must have made the enemy mad because when we got there, they were calling mom, the doctor was on the phone, and we stood there while the doctor told mom that you had a 50% chance of making it, and if you did, you would be a vegetable for the rest of your life. And again, we spoke life to you, and we ignored the doctor's report. We paid no attention to the doctor's report. Because you guys have taught us how to fight the good fight of faith. You've taught us that praise is our weapon. You've taught us how to stand. You've taught us how to fight. And we can never be thankful enough for that. It's because of you that my children have been safe at times when they shouldn't have been. It's because of your teaching. It, it's because of you that I was, I was on my knees and knew how to stand when things were going on in their life, when things were going on with us. You just cannot say thank you enough for that. I so appreciate your commitment and your dedication to the call of God on your life. And like Gil said, I know it hasn't always been easy. but. I am so thankful that we're here to celebrate with you tonight. Why y'all laughing already? Um, I got to get the mic before Tiffany does because she'll start talking about how she's the favorite and a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> but uh, I was thinking today, because I was pretty sure this was going to happen. So I was thinking about uh, what to say about 50 years of ministry. And I thought about it for a while, and then I realized that it speaks for itself. There's nothing I can say about 50 years. I don't know what 50 years feels like. Don't know what running ministry feels like. Um. But 50 years of ministry, I mean, it just, it speaks for itself. Uh, so I can't speak to that, but what I can speak to is the character um, of these two. Uh, and I was, I was thinking about what impresses me the most about each one of them. My grandmother 
It's got to be her love walk. She loves everybody. Unconditionally loves everybody. No matter the situation, the, the person. You know, some people you got to dig deep to love. <laughs> like deep. And she does. She loves everybody um, all the time. And it's amazing to me. And I think it's so amazing to me because I don't have that. I ain't got it. Um, I'm working on it. <laughs> it's to me passenger in here tonight for me to be lying. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't got it. But, no, it is. It's something to say about, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. She will speak her mind. And she will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Um, but she does it out of love. I mean, I've had, a, I've had to have a couple sit-downs with Grandma. But, it, you know, it was out of love, and, and I, I appreciate that. Um, my granddad, where do you start? I mean, I think that was a quick story. I was at work um, a couple weeks ago, and I had an opportunity to get kind of frustrated and mad and upset. And a lot of times when I get in those situations, I think, like, how would my granddad navigate this? How would he carry himself? What would he do? How would he act? And it's always the same answer. He would just be the same calm, cool, collected, poise. He's the Tom Brady of the ministry. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> like, he's, he's, he's automatic, you know? I'm fourth quarter, two minutes left on his own 20. He's got it, you know? <laughs> but, I mean, it's just, he's, he's so, I've, he's so, you know what to do in every situation. And we're supposed to be godlike, and you're the definition of godlike. I just want you to know that. I, uh, <laughs> in 31 years, I've never seen this man lose his cool. I've seen this man lose his cool. No, but really, I've, I'm 31 years. I've never I lost my cool in love. That's it. 31 years, never seen him lose his cool. I've never seen his hair messed up. It is physically impossible for his hair to go forward. I just want you all to know that. But I do want you all to know that we appreciate you. And it's because of you that I'm here. You know, we're all here. We're all, I mean, it's because of you. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I don't know how I'm going to follow that one. Um, that's my wife, Stephanie. Uh, she wasn't up here when we got introduced. Um, I do want to say... Um, Y'all know Granddaddy, Pastor Phil, Granddaddy was a linebacker at, in high school. And so I just want to let y'all know that all the athletic ability that he had, he passed to me. <laughs> I'm the most athletic person on this old stage. And if any of y'all want to say something about it, let's get it. <laughs> no, Granddaddy, it's uh, not much I can say after my brother just... The main thing he said was 30, 31 years, it's, well, 30 for me, but 30 years, I've never seen this man. And I, and I know it's easy to say, but it's not easy to do. I know a lot of y'all probably have come across some situations that you probably regret, but I've never in my life have seen you lose your cool or do something that I thought you should even repent about. I swear, I've never seen this man lose his cool. Mamma, <laughs> maybe like maybe he has, but not me. But uh, Mamma, one thing about Pastor Barbara, she is gonna make sure your belly is full. She's gonna make sure your belly's full. If you already ate, you're gonna eat again. So, uh, but I, I really I appreciate it. I, I love y'all. Um, like like Randall said. 
you know, what would Jesus do? We, we, what would Granddaddy do? So I appreciate that and the footsteps that you've given me to follow. Thank you. I always said I wasn't going to say something because I'm the emotional one of the family. Tears just naturally come. Um, and I'm not funny like the others. So, um, But I do want to say, you know, you guys are such great examples in life. And it's literally because of what you've taught that I'm physically here today. Between the same year that you lost, almost lost your life, I almost lost mine. That same week, the devil tried to take both of us. So, um, not many know, but I flipped my vehicle three times going 70 miles an hour down the interstate that same week. And I walked away with just a minor scratch. And it's because I listened to the Holy Spirit. I drove all the way from Smithfield to Chesapeake without a seatbelt on. And it was right before I got on the interstate that the Holy Spirit said, put that seatbelt on. And it's because of what you taught us to listen in those moments that I'm here. And you guys and you guys are just such great examples in not just in ministry but in marriage. You know, when anybody's going through struggles in marriage or just trials and tribulation, we just gotta think about what God has done in your marriage and what he's brought you through. And I thank you for that. And we love you. And I know Dana wishes he could be here too to say he loves you. But, um, yeah, again. All right, Tiffany Stern. I'm going to be fast, but um, I love you guys. And I've, I've seen um, all, I've been um, in ministry my whole life. And so I've got to, to experience all aspects of, of your correction, your love, um, your dedication, your passion. And... Brittany touched on the marriage thing, but that's that's literally the, all that kept coming. I didn't know I was going to have to do this, so I didn't have preparation like Randall. But um, I just, <laughs> I, um, you know, I, it, it is like you fight for this family. This family is so close. You, I mean, we're all here tonight, and you guys are, are at the top of it. You're the pillars to, to this family. And to think about your marriage stems to theirs, to theirs, I mean, to everybody's here it's just such an example of love that you you put so much passion into the people that you helped create that you helped cultivate you know these relationships and it it peers off into everybody here in this building tonight everybody here loves you and to watch you guys just grow and love me through all of my stuff regardless the same like like nothing ever happened you know it just it means the world to me to to call you guys pastors, but, but grandparents. You mean everything to me. So, I love you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, baby. Hallelujah. You guys, none of us would be here without you. But especially these men wouldn't be here without you. And Debbie and I knew each other before either one of us um, got married. We were dating, and that's how Debbie and I became acquainted. And we have some stories <laughs> that I won't go into. But, <laughs> but the point that I'm making is that because of consistency, and that's, that's the thing, Pastor, is consistency. Because of that, never giving up, never allowing the enemy to have the upper hand. I mean, he can come at you with different things, but you don't allow him to rule. Never giving him the upper hand. These men grew in faith and became pillars of our own individual families. Mom, you taught me how to be in ministry. You taught, both of you taught us how everything behind the scenes works, not just what happens out here on stage. And you can only be taught that with excellence from people of excellence. And you know, they always say, 
we used to have ministry of excellence classes and even now phil and i will teach ministry of excellence classes why because we're not going to do anything halfway right and that's from you and so we just want to say thank you thank you we love you hallelujah well praise the lord everybody get your bibles and let's just turn to mark eleven twenty two. 22 <laughs> hallelujah Well, they're ready anyway, praise the Lord. No, we, you know, people say, you know, they talk about, you know, how I minister and things like that. But if you'll go back and watch old videos, I am calm compared to my dad. My dad, I haven't, I don't jump pews. I don't run over backs, you know. And, but, you know, everything that is in my DNA, my natural DNA comes from right here. And because of that, you, this is, you know, one of the things that we try to explain to people when we're on the road, when they're talking about families and things like that, and we try to, to, to teach on family and understand family. That in the world that we live in today, it's very rare that you can go through life with your family, and at the end of your life, you're still with your family. We work. We function. We're not dysfunctional. Because of the things that they have imparted into us. You see this. We're like this all the time. We're all, we get together and we have times together and we cook out. I remember you know, always on Monday afternoons, we would always take Monday and we would all go together. And we would, you know, we would cook out and those were times that we would have. We, it was set in the calendar. We were married and we started having kids. You still, on Monday afternoons, we're going to have family time at mom and dad's. Because they knew the importance. It wasn't just about uh, us just coming. They knew the importance that if they could set that foundation up as a family from, from, from beginning to end, as we even grew up older and, and started having kids, and then our kids started having kids. It's the stability of, of, the, of the word of God that they would instill into us, and, he would, and they would share the gospel with us, and they would share the word with us. And because of that, that's why we're still standing, and that's why we're still here, and that's why they're still here, because in their weak moments, we, we were able to step up in the spirit realm and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, and they didn't have to fight by themselves. They didn't have to, they didn't have to worry about whether DNA was standing with them. They had DNA standing with them because of everything that they put inside of us and all of you that are here tonight we we thank you you know when when debbie was talking about this the the you know 10 years ago and and what had happened and they talked about you know my brother called me that that morning that you know at 4 30 or 5 o'clock in the morning you know when your phone rings you don't that's not a good call somebody's not calling you just to say hello and I and I this is so important about the, the the extended family because what you see on this front row, what you see in, in, in the congregation, this is the extended of the private family. Because the first call I made was Pastor Mark and Trina at five o'clock in the morning. And it rang. And it rang. And then the answer machine came on. Because Mark ain't gonna answer the phone at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> But it, honestly, it was what, a minute, two minutes later, Trina calls. Said, what's, what's going on? And we begin to tell her. And we, so when that happened, not only were we praying, but this was praying. And it went across the United States, that, that prayer uh, went across the United States for you because of what you imparted, the foundation that you imparted, the relationships that you imparted into all of us. You're still standing, and you're still here, and you're still strong. And you come Sunday mornings, you're still preaching the gospel. That's why we can celebrate 50 years. Because the alternative, we would not be here standing here tonight celebrating 50 years if he didn't impart into us what he did. Glory to God. So we just want to say thank you. We traveled all over the world, and every, everything that is happening, you guys are a part of that because of everything that you stilled into us. I look across here, and Pastor Charles, and Pastor David, and Pastor Mark, I mean, we're, we're talking 40 years of just in relationships. 
50 years with Pastor Charles. Going on almost 50 years. You know, this, this is an example. This is an example of staying the course. Not allowing the enemy to move you to the left or move you to the right. So thank you. I mean, I can sit up here all night and give you accolade after accolade after accolades. Because it would all be true. And none of it would be sugar-coated. And none of it would be evangelistically speaking. It would all be true. Your faithfulness is the reason why we're all here tonight. You stayed the course. You know, we, Gil was talking about the, the you know, he, we don't know all the things behind the scenes. But I do remember that we'd eat uh, weenies and cheese and macaroni and cheese. My mom would fix them. We were in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they had given up their, we, it wasn't because we liked it so much. We did like it, but that's what we had to do. But it didn't waver them. My dad couldn't even get out of bed hardly in the mornings. And he would get up and get ready for uh, Raymond Bible Training Center and go to school. Couldn't even hardly move. But he would get up and go sit in those hard chairs. Because the Lord told him this is where they're supposed to be. Sit there in pain and agony in the natural. But that was just for a short period because faith kicked in. And one morning, getting ready for school in the shower. Because of his faithfulness, healing touched him and hit him. That everything that he put into us, that's everything he has put into us. We will not be moved. We will not be shaken. So, Dad, thank you so much. From all of our family to you, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. At this time, we have a congratulatory video we want you to see, about six or eight minutes long. They go ahead and play that. Hello, Phil and Barbara. Congratulations on 50 years of ministry. I tell you, you guys must have started preaching when y'all was three. Praise God. What a blessing of the Lord it is. 50 years of kicking the devil's brains out. Victory Life Church, y'all are blessed because of this wonderful couple. I want y'all to have a glorious time. Let's do another 50 years. You know, we believe the Bible. Praise God. We can get it done. Happy celebration. Have a glorious and wonderful time. May God richly bless both of you. Hey everybody, we're here in Nagaland, Northeast India, and we are so excited to be a part of this celebration of 50 years of ministry. Pastors, we love you. You have invested so much into our life. We owe you a debt of gratitude that we can never fully repay. But we want you to know that whatever good is happening through this work, you have a part in it. And I know that your reward will be great in heaven. We love you so much and we miss you so much. Thank you. Pastors Phil and Barbara, world changers, generals of God, today we celebrate you and we salute you. We love you and we appreciate who you are. 50 years of ministry is quite of a milestone. 50 is jubilee. So we proclaim today that your best days are ahead. Congratulations, and we love you guys. Thank you for your service to the Lord, your faithfulness to the Lord, and your impact in the kingdom. Congratulations, Pastor Phil and Pastor Barbara. 50 years celebration of ministry. You have been an inspiration to so many. You've helped so many young people to get started in the ministry. You've helped others like me and encouraged us over the years. You've truly been a friend. And the people at uh, Victory Life are truly blessed to have you and Sister Barbara as their pastor. You've helped establish churches around the world. You're truly an inspiration and a great blessing. And we honor you this day. We've seen a ministry of integrity. We've seen a ministry that has honored God and served God. And you're an encouragement to all of us. And thank you for what you've put into our lives, Pastor Phil and Pastor Barbara. Congratulations, Pastor Phil and Barbara. We love you very much. Happy 50th anniversary celebrating ministry, Mom and Dad. We're blessed to be a part of your lives for the last 21 years. 
uh, watching God do extremely incredible, amazing things in and through your lives and the ministry that he's called you to. Yes, we just want to say congratulations to uh, 50 years of dedication uh, to the kingdom of God and, and uh, uh, commitment and just a, a spirit of excellence. Uh, you guys exude uh, a spirit of excellence uh, and we just uh, we just love and, and appreciate you and uh, we value we value the relationship we've had with you over the years and the Privet family uh, you've meant so you've meant uh, so much so much to us and uh, we just pray blessings and health and and uh, prosperity. We love you. God bless you. Yes, we love you. God bless. Bye bye. Hello, I'm Pastor Diana Davis. To Pastor Phil, to Pastor Barbara, and to Victory Life Church. We here at Rapture Worship Center celebrate 50 years of ministry along with you. Thank you for your faithfulness, your steadfastness, and your obedience to the call of God. We are today because you are. We honor you and salute you. God bless you. We love you. Happy 50 years of ministry. Greetings, uh, Barbara and Pastor Phil. I'm telling you, we just are so thrilled to say congratulations on your 50th ministry anniversary and such people as you uh, being blessings in our life. God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you, sir. Hi, Pastor Barbara and Pastor Phil. We're so excited to be a part of your celebration tonight. Um, when I was thinking about what I wanted to say to you guys, I just really recalled from my remembrance when I was a kid and a teenager at Faith is the Victory, and you would come and, and minister to me, and you've, you've been sewn into my life since I was a little bitty kid, and I just am so grateful and thankful for that heritage that you've given me, and just honored that you know that when I would grow up and get married that you guys would still partner with us in ministry and we could be co-laborers together in the gospel. I'm so thankful for you and we love when we come to visit you guys. You always treat us so kind just like family and we appreciate and love you guys. Praise God. Pastor Phil and Pastor Barbara we just appreciate you so much. You have such a huge part in everything that we're doing in China and Laos and Myanmar and Thailand and uh, just sending the gospel and you've you've touched countless lives so your prayers and your partnership and your giving and your friendship and just um, loving on us as uh, missionaries and we just really appreciate you guys and love you guys and just so excited that you're celebrating 40 years uh, at the church and 50 years in ministry that's a huge accomplishment and so we give glory to God for um, your sacrifice and your commitment and um, your service to our Lord and Savior and to his people and to the body of Christ and to the world so love you guys thanks again um, and we're looking forward to celebrating many many more years with you as you serve the Lord together God bless you Hi, Pastor Phil, Pastor Barbara. 50 years of ministry, of teaching and changing people's lives. Thank you. Thank you for your love, your encouragement, your support as I work to fulfill God's calling on my life here in Japan. You have taught me not only the truth of the word, but also how to build a ministry of excellence. The seeds you've planted in my life will reap a mighty harvest here. So thank you, congratulations, I love you, and I'll see you soon. Congratulations, Pastor Phil and Pastor Barbara, for 50 wonderful years of ministry. We at Port Norfolk Church love you and thank you so much for your partnership. Hello, Pastors Phil and Barbara. Hello. We want to say congratulations yeah. on 50 years in ministry. We have been blessed by you over the years. Absolutely. And we're so thankful for how you've ministered to us, to our children. And our grandchildren. And our grandchildren. Thank you so much. Yeah. You've ministered to countless other people. So yes. many have been blessed by you being obedient to what God called you to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thank you again. And again, congratulations. Hello, Pastor Phil and Barbara. Uh, 50 years of ministry. I was thinking back today, about 48, 49 years ago, you was on a construction site. First time I met you, I knew your brother, and you guys had me in a closet there. I was on my knees doing some trim work, and you asked me a question. You said, are you saved? And I don't know if, I don't remember the follow-up or anything, yet there is, was a follow-up, but you were had your crew going there, and Shirley and I visited your church, and weren't long after that, and uh, uh, you welcomed us in and then you come visit us on your visitation uh, a couple of nights later and 
uh, I always tell people you you come and share what you had. Uh, you had newly saved yourself, and you but and that's what's required. You freely received from God, and you freely gave to us. And uh, you told me about six six six, and I, I don't know if I'd ever thought about six 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 and number six six six. So I tell people you. Uh, yeah, Pastor Mark said one time you you know you go to some places they try to uh, uh, preach the hell out of you, and sometimes they try to teach the hell out of you. You go to jail to try to rehabilitate the hell out of you. But I tell people you try to scare the hell out of us, and uh, you know you told us what you knew. Happy fiftieth anniversary, Pastor Phil and Barbara. I just wanted to um, greet you and say how much I love you and appreciate you. And I thank God for all that you have accomplished together for these 50 years. God is so good and, and he's so great in our, in our lives. And I'm just thankful that you are still around proclaiming the gospel of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and loving people. I love you and have a great, great celebration. Pastor Phil and Barbara Primitt, our wonderful friends, we understand that you are celebrating 50 years in the ministry. I can't believe you're really that old. No. <laughs> uh, we're just so excited for you, but we know that this is only the beginning. The best is yet to come. Yeah, I've got about 12 years on you, I think, or so, uh, yes, <laughs> 13 yes. maybe, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but congratulations on yes. 50 years in the ministry. Uh, I've been in it all my life with my dad and then now myself. Uh, so really, I've been in it all my uh, 81 years, but yes. uh, ministry-wise, I've been in it in 62 years, and you, you're approaching 50. Let me tell you what, it just gets better. So congratulations on 50 years in the ministry, Phil and Barb. Pastor Phil and his beautiful wife, Barbara, you're celebrating 50 years of ministry. You guys have been married a long time. You know, Joy and I, we're so grateful to have such great friends of you. And Lady Joyce have a word she wants to say to both of you. Hello, Barbara and Phil. Life is better with a friend. Great works is a priority. Great friends are a necessity. God bless you for being great friends to us for over 30 years. We hope to see you soon. God bless you. And you know, Phil, you know, you are my ace boom coon buddy. You know that we've been together a long time. We traveled all over the world together. We couldn't ask for better friends than you and Miss Barbara. God bless you. St. Peter's, will you stand and give my friend a great hand of applause? Pastors Phil and Barbara, you know, I wanted to be there along with David and Andy to celebrate with you and honor you on this very special occasion. Wow, 50 years in ministry, 40 years pastoring Victory Life Church. That is indeed something to celebrate. And we just really celebrate with you. You are such an inspiration to us so very special to us we love you our entire church loves and appreciates and celebrates with you but most of the word of life christian center staff got together today and we wanted to send you this greeting at this time we want to have some uh, remarks made by some special, special friends. And first of all, we want to call Pastor Carlton and L.V. Rogers if they'll come up to start us off. Hallelujah. Oh, the crew, whole crew coming up. Yeah, you, 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 you want to come up here? Yeah, just come on up. You can come on up. Yeah, you It looks better on live stream when you're up there. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. It's a supreme honor to be here tonight to celebrate pastors Phil and Barbara. You know, when I think of uh, God wanted so much to give the best gift that he could to his church. He loves his church so much. You know, when you love somebody, you want to give them a gift and show them how much you love them. And Ephesians 4 said that he gives us gifts in the local church, and one of them is pastors. And Jeremiah 3.15 says that God takes his very own heart 
and places it inside the heart of a pastor. So our pastors bear our Father's heart, and they forge forward in a call that God put on their lives, and we're so blessed to be connected to this couple. There's been times personally where we were going through challenges, and we knew where to call when we needed godly counsel and godly wisdom. You know, and just like the early pioneers when they came to America and they were settling, they would always send the trail leaders first, and they would go into that uncharted area, and they didn't know what enemies were there or what terrain was going to be there, but they would blaze the trail. So when the others came, they would have safe passage. And we're so grateful that you two have blazed a trail of faith. You've gone before us, and you've faced enemies and obstacles, but you've cleared the path that those of us that have come behind you could walk in your footsteps and follow you as, after you follow Christ. And we're so blessed to know you. And I think of you and I think of 1 Timothy 1.12. The Apostle Paul said, I thank my Lord Jesus Christ that he has enabled me to do the work of the ministry. And he has considered me trustworthy and faithful, placing me into the ministry. And we declare that over you. We declare many blessings. And we're so, we love you so much. And on behalf of our family, uh, Pastor Carlton and, and Amber and Brett and Angelina and our Bubby's getting married soon. So he's uh, making money getting ready to go to Bible school and get married this fall. He sends his love to you, but we stand with you as your faith friends, and we consider it an honor to know you. God bless you. Praise God. I want to say thank you. It's an honor to just to be up here to say we appreciate both of you. Appreciate you for being our friends. 2004 is when you said you would be our pastors. You took us under your wings and loved us, covered us in prayer, You've been a great inspiration to us in many ways. And you've made some impacts in our life. I think about you all when I think about the scripture here. And it says here in Psalms 112. It says, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who reveres God. The man who fears, reveres, and worships the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His spiritual offspring shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Prosperity and welfare are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. And in verse 4, part A, says, Light arises in the darkness for the upright. I want to say thank you for being a couple that have stood for what is right, who has preached the word of God and uncompromised in an uncompromised way and stood and preached the gospel strong and bold. I want to thank you for calling me, texting me, staying in touch with our family through the years and teach me how to eat crab legs. Praise God. It's Captain George, you know, you made an impression on my life that day. We were heading down in your Escalade, and you had your hand on the back of your seat, your passenger seat, and was heading there. Elvie was here doing some music here, and, and you slapped me on back the head with your big ring. I think you had a big, giant ring. and just slapped me on back the head. Son, you got to call me sometime. And uh, I kept thinking, Dad Hagen probably made that kind of impression on you. And uh, so I still bear that mark in the back of my head. <laughs> But when we got there, I was, I was thinking about this, and I applied this spiritually, but he said, uh, and I said, Pastor, how are you eating so many crab legs? You had seven plates to my one. And he says, son, don't mess with the little stuff. And so I applied that spiritually, too. You know, so when the devil tries to stir up little fires, I just step right over it. You know, just go forward. But I thank you. And last night was a great act of your love all the stuff you got going on and to call me up and pray for me. I was supposed to be in a hospital today. And we asked a doctor to change that so we could be here. And I'm so glad we were. I'm so glad we were. And that was a demonstration of your love that you've expressed towards us through the years. 
Thank you for being faith friends. We thank you. You're a great couple. Congratulations on 50 years. We appreciate you. We love you. If I don't say something, my wife will kill me. So, um, I'm Brent, uh, for y'all that don't know me. Um, where to begin? I, I don't know. I don't know where to begin to thank you. I mean, you've, this ministry has had such a, uh, effect in my life. It's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to describe it. Um, you have been a, a link to, I mean, I found my wife here. <laughs> so, um, just thank you. Thank you for being obedient. Thank you. I think uh, it'll have an effect. I don't think anybody can describe, honestly. Thank you. knows what we're laughing about. <laughs> I was just thinking when all of the family was up here earlier, when we, when we first met them, there was only Phil Jr. and Gil, and they were young then. And just look at them today. Look at all the children and grandchildren, and they didn't even have them all up here. Right, right. So what a... What a great legacy they have to leave, you know. And uh, we've had s such good times together, all of us, laughing, crying, whatever. But we won't talk about Pastor Phil's driving. <laughs> we, Pastor Barbara and I have been in the floorboard several times. <laughs> But I just want to say congratulations, and we love both of you and your whole entire family. They're all so sweet to us. I remember Pastor Fields driving. <laughs> I remember us uh, going down the street, and there was an ice cream shop, our place, right over to the right. <laughs> I don't know if it's... Barbara or Phil wanted to get some ice cream, so he turned it on a dime. <laughs> I turned around, looked in the back seat, and I didn't see Sue or Barbara. <laughs> they were in the floorboard. <laughs> but, you know, uh, 40, 40 some, 45, 46, whatever, years ago, I was uh, invited to come to Rocky Mount, and uh, I didn't know Phil, <coughs> excuse me, Phil or Barbara, and I remember when uh, Kirby, when he brought me in, uh, he picked me up and brought me down to the church, and when I walked in, uh, he said, come on, we're going to the pastor's office, and I walked in the office, and I, I thought, you see, I was really green behind the ear. I thought, Lord of mercy, there's royalty sitting behind that desk over there. And uh, I was nervous. But little did I know that God, God ordained a friendship that has lasted for almost 50 years. We've had a lot of good times together. We've discussed a lot of subjects together. <laughs> and we came to the conclusion of when Jesus was coming, but it didn't happen. <laughs> and so all of that talk went by the wayside. 
We've had a lot of conversations together on the phone. And a lot of times, Pastor Phil would say things in the conversation that he didn't know that he was encouraging me and Sue. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't know those things. But he didn't know how the Spirit of God used him to speak into our lives and to answer a question that I didn't even ask. But yet I had it. And then I remember us together in Tulsa. I remember we were going to beat everybody down to the Nanowski Center and we were going to get a front row seat. So we said, we're not going to go over there in the parking lot. We're going to park over here uh, in the skating ring there or whatever that was. So Phil and I, we left Sue and Barbara in the car. And we got out and we was going to take a shortcut right on over to the <laughs> Nanowski Center. So we had to jump a little fence. When we jumped that little fence, we landed right, I mean, we landed in the mud. <laughs> we had mud on our shoes. We had mud on our socks. But one thing good came out of it. We got a front row seat. <laughs> Amen. And so we've had a lot of adventure together. You know, I've been with, uh, we've been together down on the, in the Mississippi River bottom, <laughs> lost, <laughs> didn't know how to get out. This group of people that was surrounding us there, <clears throat> man, they looked tough. <laughs> and, uh, but he got us out. And, uh, you know, I, there's so many stories that we have together that I'm not going to talk about tonight but the good times that we've had together over all these years, preaching for one another, on vacation with one another, on cruises with one another, just being friends. Who can find a friend? And 45, 46 years ago, we found a friend. And, uh, you know, I don't know what else to say. Can you find a friend? When you find a friend, you have found a jewel for your life. And Pastor Phil and Pastor Barbara, Sue and I are so grateful, so thankful for all these years of knowing one another, being friends with one another, preaching together. You know, we could write a book, but words would not describe the joy and the happiness and the favor of God that we found upon our lives together. I remember, you know, when I came to you down in uh, Rocky Mount, and you, Bar you took me out to the house, and I, Barbara cooked spaghetti for me. She had a great big plate, and she filled that plate full of spaghetti. She had enough spaghetti on there to last me a week. But I tell you, Barbara, it was good. The spaghetti was good. Amen. So, you know, the stories go on and on and on. So I'm not going to take a lot of time to tell some of the best ones. But anyway, it's a joy for us to be here tonight. Joy for us to ex express our gratitude and our thanksgiving for you and your ministry. And I can, I can repeat what others have said. Your steadfastness. I don't think I ever called you that you were down or that you had a woe is me story. I don't think I ever heard that. Always up, always encouraging. So thank you so much. One of these days I'm going to write a book. And I'm going to tell all these stories that your family does not know anything about. And I'm going to put it on the, on the what, what is you put it on in, in New York? You put it on, what is the place you put it? Yeah, and that book is going to number one <laughs> real quick. But we love you. We appreciate you. so good to be here to uh, celebrate the, your anniversary, and we'll love you forever. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Would you like to go first? <laughs> okay, I will. Thank you very much. <laughs> there are so many things we can talk about and remember and uh, appreciate about Pastors Phil and Barbara. I think we met a good while ago. We were here the first time we mentioned that earlier that um, we came when our children were just just little ones and we parked our motorhome, I think it was, or trailer, back here somewhere. And um, wow, that's been a long time. So it's good. You know, it's not how many friends you have sometimes, how long you've had them. <laughs> Now we say we're, we're not old friends, we're just long time friends. But thank you so much. Don't you agree that Pastors Phil and Barbara are the example of a loving couple that always is the same and so, so affectionate? Is that true? I don't think I've, yes. Such an example of uh, loving marriage husband wife how you kiss her on the cheek you know she loves you you know and then to hear the stories of before before Christ oh my tell it <laughs> well I don't know if I can remember exactly but I do uh, know that he would come in she'd have a she was born again serving the Lord and being a good wife have her meal all on the table and he'd take the pitcher, tea or whatever and pour it on the floor. He tested the love of God to the limit in her. <laughs> but it was there and that love never fails. And you know, just like without like the Bible says, Paul told Timothy he says, you know, wives, you don't have to preach a sermon. Just live it. Or Peter. That was Peter. I don't know all of them you know she preached her sermon with her life and I appreciate that because it made an impression on me when we first came here years ago I was a lot younger and then it made another impression on my daughter-in-law and both of you ministering to them showing them as a young, young couple how you can succeed in marriage and get along yeah. and enjoy life and be successful as ministers and in marriage as well. So, Barbara, so many women, not, not just one, not just two, but many women have come to me and said, you are a wonderful example of not only a minister's wife, but a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and a woman of God. And I honor you. I appreciate that about you. You're so genuine and you're so real. And you know how it's, uh, you can read it in a book, but it's much easier to follow the example and to walk in the footsteps and the path that you've made and that's so valuable and I want to thank you and I honor you for honoring your husband and he is who he is not because only Jesus but because your faith and your faithfulness and your honor to him Proverbs says charm can be misleading and beauty is vain so quickly fades but this virtuous woman lives in the wonder awe and fear of the Lord that's true she will be praised throughout eternity so go ahead 
and give her the credit that is due. For she has become a radiant woman, and all her loving works of righteousness deserve to be admired at the gateways of every city. Praise the Lord. So I honor you, Pastor Phil and Barbara, and I thank you, Barbara, for being that place in my life and my children's life and the multitude of women, amen, who follow in your path and in your footsteps. Wonderful. Wow. How can I say anything after that? Um, I say behind every successful man stands a good wife and a surprise mother-in-law. <laughs> a mother-in-law rolling her eyes. Um, you heard about the guy that didn't know what to get his mother-in-law for Christmas? <laughs> so he finally decided and just got her a cemetery plot. She wasn't very happy about that. So next year he didn't get her anything for Christmas. So she said, why didn't you get me anything for Christmas this year? And he said, well, you didn't use what I got you last year. So I'm not going to get you anything for Christmas. <laughs> Well, <laughs> now this, this older woman told me this. I was in Walmart and checking out. This older woman recognized my voice, so she said, um, <clears throat> did you ever hear about the man that asked the Lord? He said, Lord, why did you make women so beautiful? The Lord said, so you would love them, my son. He said, well, why did you make them so stupid? And the Lord said, so they would love you, my son. So, <laughs> so they have mixed emotions about that. But, um, it's true, uh, the honor really goes to both of you. We thank you for being our friends in very difficult times, very tough times. You never, never wavered, just our friends for years. You always prayed with us, you always supported us, you always helped us. So we're glad we could be here just to honor you. Uh, my mom and dad have gone to heaven. And um, the Bible says, as you have opportunity, do good to all men, especially those of the household of faith. In other words, we won't always have that opportunity. But tonight we have an opportunity to do good, to honor you for your faithfulness. I studied and I found out there were 3,600 recipients of the Medal of Honor. 3,600, all the way back to 1863. And there's 66 living recipients of the Medal of Honor. You don't get the Medal of Honor for doing ordinary things. You get the Medal of Honor for above and beyond the call of duty. That's what you have done. Above and beyond the call of duty. We've come here to honor you. To... Um, Understand the significance of what you have done, your faith, and we see your family, your children, your grandchildren, and we're very thankful for what you've done and, and bless our family, our children, grandchildren. But I was thinking about just honor. The Bible teaches us to honor our father and our mother, and it says it'll be well with you, and you'll have a long life. So I looked up the word honor, and the honor means to treat with great consideration to treat as valuable, and to treat as precious. Honor your father and your mother. It didn't say you have to agree with them, but it said you have to honor them. It says men have to honor their wife, and said, are your prayers to be cut off? We know that Moses laid hands on Joshua, placed some of his honor upon him. We know that God actually gives out the medal of honor. We know something else about honor is you can respect with words, but you have to honor with substance. In other words, honor will always cost you something. And so we've come here tonight to honor you. But the blessing that comes from that kind of honor is Jesus there could do no mighty works. He marveled at their unbelief. And then he said, a prophet's not without honor. So a lack of honor limited Jesus in his earth ministry. 
and a lack of honor will limit how you and I receive a man of God. So tonight we came to honor you, but I've got something else, the benefits of that honor. And I see Bill and Renee sitting over there. When he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, he said he was already turning yellow, leaving, driving down the road. He said to put the window down and he hollered out the window. He said, God, I know I haven't done everything right, but I have always honored my father and my mother. So you said I will have a long life. So I command that cancer to leave my body. <laughs> Woo, and he went back and it was healed and look at him now. So the benefits of honor. And so honor your father and your mother. You don't have to always agree with them, but you better honor them. Even the gift of God, your pastor, you may not always agree with them, but you better honor them. You being here tonight is a part of that honor. Well, honor will keep you busy. Learning how to honor the way you talk, the way you treat someone is valuable, precious. But when it comes to ministry gifts, he says, let those who labor in the word and doctrine worthy of double honor. Double honor? In other words, you were struggling with single honor at the house. And then you come to church and God says, I'm requiring double honor for those who are serving in the ministry. And so tonight, we're just following what the Bible said to do. Come to give honor, double honor. I believe God has a medal of honor. Amen. And so we love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. Amen. Did I get your story right, Bill? Isn't that amazing? How many believe that your honor for this man of God will do something supernatural in your life? I said, your honor for this man of God will do something in your life. Come on, it'll do more for you than you'll ever be ever doing for him. Amen. Come on. In other words, treat him as extremely valuable and precious. 50 years of preaching the gospel. Woo! Medal of honor. Tonight. And my dad, before he went to heaven, he had done these 40 years, 50 years. Boy, we said we're going to honor him. So we, we got a surprise for you later. Hallelujah. Amen. So I don't know who's next, but that's not my job. Hallelujah. Amen. So who's next? Come around up here right now. Let's give Pastor Phil and Barbara. We love you. Honor you. Valuable and precious. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Phil and Pastor Barbara Privet, on behalf of Lisa and I and our children and Center Church in Fort Worth, Texas, we just want to tell you congratulations on 50 years of ministry and 40 years pastoring this church. And we want to tell you how very thankful we are that we were able to meet you and we love you very much. Amen. Amen. Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins are our spiritual father and mother and our, and our pastors. And when we worked for them 20 years ago, they said, you need to drive up to Shreveport and pick up Phil and Barbara Privet. I said, yes, sir. So there we went. And you know, it was our first time meeting pastors Phil and pastors Barbara Privet. And when you meet them, you feel like you just met your mom and dad. You feel like you just got hugged and loved on by your own father and mother or your own grandmother and grandfather. How many of you have ever felt like they loved you just like their very own children? Amen. And you know, Pastor Barbara and Pastor Phil, the Bible says in Mark 10, 29, Jesus said there's no one who has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, but he shall receive a hundredfold. Now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children 
and lands with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. And you know, you, I know every single one of, of us in this room could come up to this platform and say, we have been loved by Pastors Phil and Barbara, just like our very own father and mother. And you know, you all have babies all around the world. You have white babies and black babies and India babies and Chinese babies. And you have at least two Hispanic babies. <laughs> you have received more than a hundredfold. And you have affected more lives than you'll ever realize. You don't even know. And that's the first thing that I experienced when we met you was just how much you love. And you've loved us that way for 20 years. The next thing I experienced was that I was sitting at Pastor Hankins' house, and we were there with you serving, and, and uh, you found out I like to fight. You found out a little bit about me and my boxing and fighting. And, and you said, well, son, you said, make a fist. Let me see your fist. I never had a preacher ever ask me to make a fist before. I, I said, what? And he said, come on, make a fist. So I, I made a fist like that. And he goes, and a spark in his eye. I said, oh, this man likes to fight. He said, yeah, that's a pretty good fist, son. You ought to be able to do some good fighting with that. And I, all of a sudden, I realized that if we would have grown up together, we would have been good buddies. And I realized this man's a fighter. And then I began to hear all the stories and all the victories and all the battles that you have overcome and fought and then your children have said the same thing tonight. I want to thank you for teaching us how to be overcomers. And look at all the generals that have gathered here tonight. There's a gathering of generals. Pastor Charles and Pastor Sue, and Pastor Mark and Trina, Pastor David. All these generals that have come to honor you, sir, because you and Pastor Barbara are worthy of honor. And then I love how Pastor Barbara, she's like my mother, the most loving person you've ever met and also the toughest woman you've ever met there's something about pastor barbara you know how much she loves you but then all of a sudden she don't have to say it you can tell this woman is a rock this woman is a foundation for this man and this family you can just see it she doesn't have to say a word but when she does say a word <clears throat> There's power with it. And I like how I'll say the word particular she is. Not picky, but particular because that's excellence. Uh, and, and I love it and I hear it in her voice. And I hear the authority in your voice. Thank you. You give strength to all of us, Pastor Barbara. Love and strength to us all. We love you. Amen. Amen. Um, he's pretty much said it all for us. But... Um, I just want to thank you for, for loving my family. You have just truly loved my husband and I, our kids. Our kids mean, I mean, they just talk so much highly about you, and they wish they could have been here this evening. But um, we were honored to be able to have them preach in our church um, some years back. And um, it was Christmas time, and we got to go downtown together and watch the Christmas parade together. And those are special times. Those are special times together that I will, that I will treasure. And so today, you know, we've all given words of what we feel towards you. And we have, some have already mentioned these, but for me, you know, seeing your dedication to the body of Christ, to this church, to your family, to those um, who surround you, which dedication is willingness, willingness to give a lot of time and energy to something because it is important. And also honor, honors to regard with highest or great respect or great esteem. Number three, faithful, that means to be steadfast. You are steadfast. And number four, loyal, which is giving or showing firm and constant support or allegiance to a person or an institute. So we thank you for all of those things. I thank God for bringing you all together, which went ahead and had this church here. Because without you, this church would not be here. 
these people would not be here. And so we just love you from the bottom of our hearts, and we say thank you. Love you. Thank, you. thank you for giving to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to let Jay go first, and um, because, you know, the moment she met you, Pastor Barbara, she immediately fell in love with you, your spirit, and everything, and um, I'm going to save mine for the end, because like preachers, you know, we close it out, so... <laughs> Thank you, honey. So, um, Pastor Phil and Pastor Barbara, I don't have the privilege to sit here and say, or stand here and say, I've known you all my life. I've known you for 10 years. But the time that I have known you, which has been 2018, has felt like an eternity. And when I first met Pastor Phil, um, we were at Pastor Cowan's church, Pastor um, Charles and Sue, um, Pastor Sue, and when we were walking in, my husband said, you're about to meet two of the most respected men that I know. And for him to say that, like, that kind of got my attention because, you know, we, we travel a lot and we meet a lot of pastors, and when we walked in and, and you greeted, it, it was really like everyone is saying, I really just felt like this connection and I was like, he is such a, you know, such a loyal and just a man of valor. And to you, Pastor Barbara, all he can talk about is his wife. You are definitely a crown on his head. He, he loves you so much. And all he kept on saying is, my, my wife, Barbara, you got to meet her. And boy, when I met you, I was like, I love her. She's amazing. And so I've only known you for just a few years. But deep inside, I really, we really do love you very much. And I do feel that love, like that parent that these pastors were just talking. I'm like, yes. So that's all. We love you. <laughs> I, it's, I don't know what to say except we sincerely love and honor you. Um, I was... You know, it's about 15 years ago now that I, I think about it. And um, I was, you know, reading a book by Kenneth Hagin. And, and after a period of time that week, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me very clear about my life and destiny. And I didn't know what to call spiritual fathers at that time. I didn't know... You know, I came from a particular denomination where we didn't even know what that was. But what I didn't know is what happened to me was my, my spiritual destiny, my, my DNA was unlocked in me. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and says, I'm going to connect you to Brother Hagin's anointing. I'm going to connect you to Rhema because that's where your ministry is. And what I've called you to do in the earth is tied to that place. Well, Brother Hagin went on to be with the Lord the same year the Lord told me that. And so it was like, okay, I, I thought I heard you, you know, speak to me about the connection of that anointing and all of those things. And, you know, you, you just think maybe you miss God. And then I got an opportunity to come to Nashville, Tennessee. And when I walked in the Faith is the Victory to minister at the conference, what I did not know is that two of the men that were probably the closest to Brother Hagin, according to his wife from a personal standpoint, was Pastor Charles and Pastor Phil. And I knew then that God wasn't just sending me there for ministry. He was sending me there for destiny. And when I met him... Pastor Charles and just the connection and the love I have for him. And then Pastor Phil was there. And I got to tell you this story because he walked up to me and he looked me right in the eye. And he was like, you got to come to Virginia. And the way he said it, it's like he didn't give me no, you know, 
he didn't ask me if I would like to come. You know, would you come? He was like, you're coming. And I knew right then, I said, you know, he's not a man you tell no. And then when I found out a little bit about his past, I, I saw, I felt a little bit of that residue up in there. I was like, and so I nicknamed him from that day forward. I said, you approach me like the Godfather. You made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So when I get up, I always call him the Godfather of faith. You are my man. I love you so much, your whole family. You and your wife, you do not know. We cannot put in words what you mean to us. And um, I'm just going to say this because this is probably the, the best way I can just say thank you and honor. It was watching you 10 years ago and watching your wife go into this mode of of just a a woman of faith and courage and peace and calm i remember when we came here and i hadn't seen you yet at the hospital she she was walking around here just holding things together in an amazing way and that taught me something and when i walked in the hospital room and i saw you Jesus spoke to me, the Spirit of the Lord, one day and said, a lot of people preach about me, but they're not necessarily preaching me. And he said, son, I don't really want you to preach about me. I want you to preach me because I'm the message that I want the world to see. Not just what I did, but, but, but me, who I am. I am the message. And sir, a lot of people can preach faith, talk faith, sing faith. But you are the message of faith, both of you. So thank you, because without you, I would not be released into the destiny. So much favor has come on my life through our connection. And we love you forever, and we thank God for you. Thank you,
is going to use this church to affect nations. You no telling who it will be. Uh, he would never say, as I said, he would never say no, um, but he would always say, I'll try. And I found out this, when a man makes himself available for God to use, God will just use it. I think it'd be appropriate to stand up and give them a real big. Uh, you may be seated. I'm uh, a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, I was a teenager when I came to their church. Just a kid who was hungry for God. And so many people have talked about love. These two people love me. I had a mom that loved me. They loved my mom. My brother told his testimony. The reason I prayed for my brother to get saved, but God used Pastor Field to get him saved. It scared the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> He taught me, Pastor Field taught me to witness. He taught me to visit people. Gave me opportunity to preach and teach. He's taught me so many ways. He was a true father. My father died when I was eight. It's a pain that nobody understands except somebody's had the pain. But he was a father. 
excuse my emotion, but it's just my gut. And uh, of course, Pastor Barber's love is unending, unfailing, forever, faithful, and forever I'm grateful. So, there's so many people in the room, but there's so many people that are not in the room whose lives have been changed by your faithfulness and your steadfastness. And a year ago, on our anniversary, my wife was in a car accident. It's people like Pastors Phil and Barber and Mark and Trenna, and a world full of people that have prayed, and you saw her on the video tonight. She's alive. Yeah. Yeah. Because this day a year ago, she was in the hospital and couldn't talk, and couldn't move on her left side, and, And she was a strong woman before, physically, spiritually. But she couldn't do anything for herself. And that's when people like Pastor Phil and Barbara and Mark and Tredder and all this church prayed and people around the world prayed. And my wife's alive today. And she can walk and she can talk. Oh, wow. This is real. I mean, just the reality of relationships. And Pastor Mark, I mean, just a few minutes ago, talked about honor, which I was going to share a little bit about. But he said it. He beat me to it. He talked about the opportunity that we have as we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, and especially to them who are of the household of faith. So, we have an opportunity tonight. He talked about the scripture in Ephesians, honor your father and your mother, that it may be well with you, that you would live long on the earth. We've endeavored to honor Pastor Phil and Barbara, and when you look back, you always see you could have done better. Yeah. But she endeavored to do faithfully what is right to do is honor them. And uh, here we are again. We have an opportunity. An opportunity. Give honor to whom honors do, and certainly. All of the words that have been spoken tonight is an expression of our honor for the two of you and your faithfulness, your faith and your faithfulness, your steadfastness of faith, which has always been uh, an example to me and to my wife and, of course, your love for us and encouragement to us and always being there for us and never never fail to be there for us when we needed somebody to talk to. So we're grateful for your friendship and your mom and dad. I mean the reason my wife is not here tonight is because our mom said, I think it's too much. And it was. it was. I just needed to hear my mom's voice to say, it's okay. Because you want to do what's right. She wanted to be here. But it was just not the best right now. It's a little bit too much. So, honor is so important. They honored Dad Hagen, 
and God gave him special, a special place in Dad Hagen's heart and Mom Hagen's heart. Why did he leave a church actually that was successful? It looked looked like a great ministry, and but he left because God directed him to go to Rama. But really, as a young man, I remember standing out in the parking lot of that church at West Side because this relationship goes back about 48 years, yeah. almost 50 years. And we're standing out in the parking lot in Pastor Field, just bore his heart and said, I feel like God's working in me to go to Virginia and start a church. That was when he was pastoring at Westside. I don't know if you remember that, but I do. And he went to Raymond, and then God sent him to this area and pioneered a church, and that's well, here we are 40 years later. 40 years of pastoring this church in this area. And I've been a pastor for 39 years almost now in Las Vegas, and I know there's a lot of lives as a pastor. You know there's a lot of lives that you affect and you've affected in this area that are not here tonight. They're not even a part of this church. There's thousands of people, multiplied thousands of people that your life has affected. And only eternity will fully tell what your obedience has produced and the fruit of your labor. So tonight, as Pastor Mark said, you can respect with words, but you must honor with substance. And so in Proverbs 3 and verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. And thy presses shall burst out with new, new wine or overflow. Your barns will be filled with plenty. So there's something about honoring the Lord. But there's something about giving honor. And again, the scripture that one of the scriptures that Mark shared the, is that the labor is really worthy of double honor. So they're worthy of double honor. Double honor would then actually, it's talking about there where it says double honor. It's all actually talking about financial blessing. Double honor of financial reward. So it's not just honoring with our love and respect and words and kindness and and value is precious and all the things that we've heard tonight in this room. But it's honoring with substance. And so this camp meeting, people have been giving. We, we understand that. I'm a pastor. I understand that. But also understand that 50 years of ministry is worthy of double honor. And there's a special place in God's heart for people who do honor. And there's something that's going to come to your life because of your honor. Amen. God opens up something for you. He opens up your heart. Yeah. And right now the ushers are there. You have an opportunity to take an envelope. And there's other ways to give. Of course, by text, and so you can give whatever way you're accustomed to giving. But I thought about 50 years, and so we're going to give from our church $5,000 to, but if you look at it, $5,000 is only like $100 a year. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
so and then we're going to give another thousand. So just to not to just to say, just do your best. I remember when Pastor Mark's father was celebrating 40 years and they really didn't, didn't seem like the church was going to do anything that was significant at all. 40 years of his life and, and if anyone knew Pastor Hankins, you'd know he was like Pastor Phil and Barbara, just he and his wife just loved on you. And, and served and poured out their life. Yeah. Like pastors Phil and Barbara just poured out their life here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here tonight because Pastor Phil and Barbara poured out their life in me. Yeah. I wouldn't be here. Yeah. More than once. <laughs> I could have been taken out. Yeah. But as a teenager, the devil was trying to take me out. But because of these two, I'm here tonight. He came to my house and prayed for me. Something changed from that night. I'm just telling you something about honor will, there's, there's miracles that happen because supernatural things happen because you honor. Talked about Jesus. They didn't honor him in his own hometown, so he couldn't do many mighty works there. So just do your best. <laughs> Pastor Mark has 5,000 that they're going to give. So that's 10,000. Listen, if we didn't do any, and I know Pastor Phil and Barbara don't want us to put any pressure, and, and this is not about pressure. This is about honor. This is about, this is not pressure. This is about precious. This is about precious. This is about valuable. And every one of us probably in this room could tell a story. And their families up here. There's multiplied stories about these two and why this family is up here like this tonight. Stories that only eternity will tell in this room. Because we didn't do anything else this week if we did this. we would have done the will of God. Because what you honor, you attract. And what you dishonor, you repel. And the Holy Spirit will re reward those. He said, your barns will be filled with plenty. Your presses will overflow. There's financial blessing. This is not to pump it up. I'm just telling you, this is just the way it works. Yeah. Yeah, just the way it works. I've heard Pastor Mark tell, it's Bill, right? Bill and Renee, I, he'll hit your story, but I didn't know it was you. He just did it generally. Yeah. But tonight I know it's you. And that means more to me. Yeah. It puts a person with the... Because yeah. yeah. he honored. Yeah. My mother went home at 93. She was honorable yeah. and worthy of double worth. Any kind of honor you could yeah. give her. Yeah. Yeah. She was a real deal. Yes, yeah, she was. Every pastor's dream. <laughs> to have her in their church yeah. <laughs> or that kind of person in their church. Yes, yes. But I'm just saying honor. I tried to, I endeavored to honor my mom. He honored his, his, his mother and father and 
it was well with him. When hell wanted to take him out, it was well. Hallelujah. 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 Well, there's all kinds of blessings that come from honor. Yeah, that's true. You can't count them. Father, we thank you tonight for just giving us this opportunity to honor Pastors Phil and Barbara for their faithfulness to you, to your call. And Father, we thank you for their impact on each of our lives and the multitudes of others that are not in this room who may some be watching. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for deepening our appreciation and deepening this relationship. We count it valuable. We count them valuable and precious. And help us always to do the right thing, and that is to honor. To honor you by honoring them. So thank you, Father, for the, their lives. And thank you for this opportunity. Now, Father, we know that you're faithful. Yes, yes. And you've been faithful to them. And, Lord, faithful to us. And we thank you, Lord, now in Jesus' name for the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and that you had no sorrow, that you blessed their lives abundantly and that, Lord, you bless this people and everyone that sows into their lives tonight. You bless them abundantly. We know that you will. We know that it's your desire and it's your faithfulness that will cause it to happen. So we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Now, if you'll make your checks, you, if you've already made them to a, a Victory Life, that's fine, but you can make your checks. If you could hold just for a minute, please. Thank you. If you'll make your checks, you can make them to uh, them personally. Pastors Phil and Barbara, just Pastor Phil and Pastor Barbara. You can do it that way. If you, again, if you've already made your checks out, that is fine. The church will take care of that. But you can make it in personally. Obviously, if you're given by credit card, you want to go through the church, that anyway is fine. It'll work. All right? But I just want to give you a little instruction so that people know, clear. And... Uh, We could say we've taken a little bit too much time, or we could say, no, it was just a wonderful night. Amen. <laughs> just wonderful. I just, I just enjoyed every moment of it. Been crying on the front row, now I cry in front of you. <laughs> Make a mess of myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, ushers. Thank you all for your kindness, your honor for these two that you love so dearly that they've loved you. We love them because they loved us. It's kind of like God. We love him because he loved us. Amen. So, and I'm so blessed. To, you know, I came in, I, I'm a little older than Phil and Gil. They were kids when I came to the church. But he, they raised them to just serve the Lord. And here they are. And I'm so blessed to see their families and so blessed to see how God's using Phil and Jerry Ann and Gil and Debbie. And it's just like they're in their place. Yeah. Nothing like being in your place. And so you're in your place, so there's grace for your place. And, Love you, Dad, and love you, Mom. Thank you for being a dad and a mom to us. Love you. Love you so
up here? Can you make it up yeah, five? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Okay, come on. I got you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. I'm overwhelmed. We're surrounded tonight. When they were going to do this, there were certain people that I wanted here. People that had, as part of our story, in ministry, our journey. When I look at Bill and Renee, I'll never forget this as long as I live. My brother had gotten killed in a car wreck. He was hit, instantly killed. They came not long after that, and I was, I was grieving. I was hurting. And this couple took me to California, paid first, sent, sent me first class with them to California to a meeting. You'll never, ever know how much that meant to me. I'll never forget that. Y'all had had a special place in my heart for many, many years. And I didn't want to celebrate tonight without you. I didn't want to celebrate tonight without Mark and Trina. Mark, you came and taught the word to us. How many of you know that Mark, when he first started teaching, he would stand in one spot and never move? <laughs> he was a little skinny thing with afro hair and he would just take this word and he would just stand there and teach the word you can be seated he would just stand there in one spot and teach man but it was powerful and you were one of our guest speakers I guess because we were upstairs it was before we ever got here it was upstairs in that upper room building, and you all came. We've, all the years that we've known you and been a part, friends with you, partaken of your ministry. Mark, you're one of the greatest teachers, as far as I'm concerned, the, one of the greatest teachers in the world. You're so faithful. <laughs> Your mama would agree with me, I know. Yeah, she surely would. But Trina, your love and your steadfastness, the prayers, the way that you carry people's into the throne room of God, their cares and their their every part of no matter what it is, you're there and people know that you're there, your strength. And, and your intercession. We love y'all so much. I d didn't want to have this without you here. And David, you're my son. I know you had a, a mother, but I've always felt like I was your mom too. Ever <laughs> since you were that young teenage boy, I've been so proud of you. When you went to Las Vegas, it was the greatest shock of my life. I never thought in a million years that David Sharon would end up in Las Vegas. And, um, but we're so proud of you. I know that the devil hates everything that you stand for, everything you and Vicki have done. Did you know that we were the last spot that you came before y'all, you had just gotten married, not been married long, and you came, and we were in that upper room, I believe we were there at that upper room, and that was one of the last places and, um, that you came to, and y'all were on your way to Las Vegas. And I think I might have said this to Pastor, I said, oh my God, what is he doing? I can never, ever imagine you 
uh, going from Rocky Mount to Las Vegas, but oh my, what an awesome, awesome, awesome ministry that you have established there, you and Vicki. You've poured your, your blood, sweat, and tears into that ministry, and I would never wanted to have this without you tonight, because you're so special to us, and what can I say? about my greatest friends in the world. You know, there's so many things that we could talk about tonight, but they truly are, you know, they are truly a friend. They have been, we've, you know, we've never, in 45 years, we've never had an argument, never, ever had an argument. And we just have so much fun when we get together. You know, we can go, we can go on, we can go a long time, months, year, or whatever, without seeing each other. But we never, we always pick up where we left off. It's like we're just family, you know. We're just connected. And I will never, ever forget you introducing us without you. We would have never had that relationship with, with Dad Hagen. Because of you, we were so blessed. He was our spiritual father. But he, we, I don't know how this even happened. But we, he requested he, he had certain people that he wanted to go on vacation with, and it was Pastor Charles and Sue, us, and Stan and Jerry Moore. The, and they would always set up the cruises and the trips, you know. And um, I remember one time, you remember that Mediterranean trip he wanted us to go on? Well, we had had some things happen at the house. We had some flooding and so forth, and we were right in the middle of... Um, you know, having all that work done at the house. And, and so we had to bow out of it. And so Dad called. And Dad Hagen, he said, well, if it's the money, he said, I'll just pay for it. And I said, Dad, we said, Dad, it's not the money. It's just that we can't go right now. The time is not right. You know, we've got all this going on. But it was because of you that we had that relationship and the things that he instilled into us, private things that he would talk to us about and teach us that nobody else. And he would say, now you can't tell this to everybody, he said, and you can't preach this to your church. Remember him saying that? But there were so many things that he instilled into us and imparted. And because of that, this is how this church has been established here. And Isaac, my other son, and we met him at your church. But there was a connection. I mean, right away, there was a connection. And Janet, when he met you, he, he would always tell me stuff. And, and, and so he said, I want to talk to you. I'm not going to tell him a lot. I'm going to tell everything. I'm not going to embarrass him. Not going to embarrass him. But he said, um, I'm, I met somebody. He said, well, actually, I've known her. He said, I've known her for years, but, you know. And, uh, but anyway, um, right from the beginning, there was that connection. And I didn't want to have this tonight without our special friends and, our, and Diana we love you. She's our spiritual daughter. She, her kids grew up here in this church. And we're so connected to one another. Thank you for allowing some of your kids to share their talent with us this week. Amen. But thank you, our church. Did you see on that video where we had every a department and all the different uh, ministries that we have going on here? Because... Without them, without this ministry, without this church, we couldn't have what we have. We haven't done this alone. It's our people that volunteer. It's the volunteers and our staff and that God has raised up this ministry because we've had help. 
and it wasn't there's no way I would have had a video without including the people that got us where we are so thank you church thank you guys thank you so much we love you you're so special and we're so happy that God called us here I don't know where in the world else I'd want to be Praise God. My heart's just full, overwhelming. And everything Pastor Barbara said, I agree with everything she said. I'm not going to go through the whole list again. You've been sitting here a while. But we truly love you, and we count it an honor to be the pastor of this church for 40 years. And uh, we believe the best is yet to come. The pandemic thing tried to stop the churches over the last 18 months, but the church... This is the year of the church. Can you go to prophesy that, that first of the year? This is the year of the church. And uh, we just love these guys, their spouses, all mean so much to us. God's given us a great family, wonderful family. We cherish. And my sister, she was here a minute ago. And we just wanted to. She must have to go to the restroom or something. Anyway, we love her and her family. And uh, it's just, uh, and thank you for your offering tonight. It's a blessing. And we thank you that God will multiply it back to you a hundredfold return. And uh, truly, the best is yet to come. Amen. There's uh we have with all the family, Tammy, Benji, Chris, y'all stand, all of y'all, y'all didn't yeah, this is uh this is um his niece and her husband and this is Juan and Frank's son Chris and Juan and Frank she had to leave. She can't sit but so long she has to go out. But I'm sorry we didn't get it soon enough to have them, but y'all the church knows his his sister and and they're a blessing. Her and Frank are such a blessing to us. We love them so much. They take care of us in grand style i just noticed that kenneth and loris johnson is here tonight oh, why did you see that? yeah they uh, they were on the screen earlier thank you for coming all the way up from north carolina to be with us tonight praise the lord we love you and elaine layton would you please stand this is she helped us get the church started in rocky mount north carolina and yeah and she has been connected to us for 50, over 50 years. We love you, Elaine. Thank you so much. We've had some tremendous prayer meetings together, I'll tell oh you that. God. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We don't have time to get into it. But um, we just love every one of you. Thank you all. These all wonderful the generals tonight, men of God, women of God, for being here, being a part of this company this year. And we just, again, say we love you. And uh, all the minute, all your ministers stand tonight. All ministers, would you stand? All you that are ministers stand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Patrick, I don't want to forget you. Patrick traveled with Dad Hagen, and he's been in my house. You, were you there the night we gave him his 73rd birthday party? Y'all came and had cake. I think you were. Anyway, he traveled with Brother Hagen, so he's been a, he's been here before with him. We honor you. Thank you for honoring Dad Hagen and taking good care of him, and we love you. Praise the Lord. Mom and Dad, um, we did want to do something special for you guys tonight. So on behalf of Victory Life Church and our affiliated ministries around the country and friends that the gifts have already come in, we want to present you with a check for $50,000. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Congratulations for 50 years. 
And we do have one more presentation. If I could get Pam to come up real quick. We have one more presentation from our Women's Connect. I'm going to put this away because she's ready to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> She's been here almost as long as we have. Come on, it's a Holy Ghost party in the house. Come on, we celebrating 50 years. Come on, who's the most excited person here? Come on, come on. Who's the most excited? It's a Holy Ghost party in the house. Well, what can we say? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Pastors, listen, we love you and we want to thank you so much. All these ladies, all the ladies that are out there, all the lives that you touch through Women Connect, especially mine. You believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself. You restored me back to do the things that God's called me to do. That first love. I am so honored and so glad to be a part of your lives and to be your daughter. Thank you so much for showing your love, your protection, your blessing, your giving. But above all, thank you that we can just show, we just as a small part of our gratitude. If you would look up on the screen, we have a picture. 40 years ago on this property, on this property, little did you guys know all the lives that you guys were touched through year after year after year. Look at the faces of those people. There had been, a, there had been a, 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 some, a, I guess, a group of people that had been believing God for a word church to be in this area. But look at the faces. Look at the races of people coming together. What the enemy meant for bad, God knew back then. God knew back then that he was going to bring a couple, a word of faith couple to this church that's gonna bring people together. And that's what you guys have done. So what we wanna do, as just a little small token of gift, we have a barb, we have a small gift that we would like for you to open. Whee! From Women Connect, let's put the next slide up. We actually have done a painting of the groundbreaking from 40 years. I'm a life that was changed. Hallelujah. We're lives that are changed. Hallelujah. Father, we're so thankful for the ministry and the call of God that's been in this house. We love you. We are so grateful, so, so grateful, so grateful. Come on, let's give my Holy Ghost shout. Well, let's give them one more round of applause. 50 years of ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, what can we say? Let us pray. We're going to end this tonight. Thank you for being here and celebrating this wonderful anniversary. Father, we just thank you right now for your goodness and your mercy. Father, we pray the blessings over each one here tonight, Father God, as they go forth and proclaim you, Father, can proclaim your word, and they touch souls that they come in contact with, Father God, the blessing will be bestowed upon them each and every day. We thank you for faithfulness and commitment, and we just thank you, Father, that from this day forth, it's going to get gooder and gooder. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, Amen, Amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you.